Hello and welcome to a video field guide to beekeeping. In this episode, I'll be discussing European and American fowl brood, two pathogens recognized by bee scientists in the early 1900s to kill developing and immature honeybees. American and European fowl brood are bacterial diseases that have been plaguing beekeepers, bees, for a very long time. Both bacteria were actually identified in the early 1900s, around 1906. But the names American and European fowl brood have nothing to do with the origin of the bacteria, but rather with the origin of the person who identified the bacteria. American fowl brood was identified by Americans, and European fowl brood was identified by European scientists. What's important to note about these bacteria is first that they don't affect anything except honeybees, specifically Apis mellifera, or the European races or African races of honeybees. Consequently, both bacteria occur almost everywhere that Apis mellifera is kept around the world. Because of that, both diseases are a worldwide problem for beekeepers. Important to understanding how to control any bee disease or pest is understanding how to recognize when you have that problem. First, we're going to talk about the symptomology associated with European fowl brood, probably because it's the easier of the two to understand. Now, if you remember, European fowl brood typically kills bees or developing larvae that are four to five days old. As such, these are larvae that have not been capped over yet. The best way to appreciate what a sick larva looks like is to understand what a healthy larva looks like. Now a healthy developing honeybee larva lies in the bottom of a cell in the shape of a letter C. That's why we call them C-shaped larva. And when you look at that larva in the bottom of the cell, that larva should be not twisted, should be glistening, and pearly white. The reason I tell you this is because European fowl brood does the opposite to all the larvae. The larvae are yellow browned, they're not glistening any longer, and they're twisted in the cell. Also associated with European fowl brood is a smell. That's where American and European fowl broods get their names from, are the fowl smell associated with the diseases. So European fowl brood has a very characteristic uh, rank smell. It's really probably the smell of decaying brood in the cells. Now, American fowl brood is a little bit more complicated to diagnose than European fowl brood because there are other symptoms from other diseases that kind of match up with those of American fowl brood. Now, if you remember, American fowl brood infects larvae but kills prepupa or pupa. As such, automatically, you're not going to be able to recognize it as easily because you're having to recognize the disease through a cell capping, which leads me to the first symptom of American fowl brood the capping of the cell is usually perforated or sunken. Now, if you look at a cell from the side view, the capping of that cell typically has a dome shape in a healthy cell. American fowl brood will cause that cell capping to be sunken. Now, the bees recognizing that there's a problem in that cell typically bite small holes in the capping of that cell or puncture marks. These are the first signs to a beekeeper that there may be a problem with the developing prepupa or pupa in that cell. The next thing you need to do is just look for those puncture cappings, remove them, and look inside the cell. Now, American fowl brood kills that developing individual inside the cell. As that bee dies, it shrivels up and sinks from the bottom to from the top of the cell to the bottom of that cell. So, for example, if you see a frame here, these are cells on the frame. Now, the back of the cell is back there. That's not the bottom of the cell. The bottom of the cell is the curved part like that, this part here. Now, as that bee dies, it shrivels down to the bottom of the cell and forms a hard scale. So this is a characteristic symptom of American fowl brood is that scale. You can't see it if you look at the frame face on. Rather, you have to tilt the frame 
such that you're looking into the bottom of the cell. Not the back of the cell, but the bottom of the cell. And you'll look for those scales. Incidentally, this is a symptom that you can look for in equipment that you purchase from other beekeepers. If you're concerned that you're buying equipment that has American fowl brood, just look in those cells for the left behind scales. Those scales are simply bees that have been dead for a long time and the adult bees have been unable to clean them out. Another symptom associated with American fowl brood is the pupil tongue. Not really the tongue at all, but what happens is that bee dies in that cell and shrivels down away from the top of the cell it leaves behind part of its anatomy stuck to the top of the cell. It looks like its tongue. Another symptom associated with American fowl brood is the ropey test. Now, you find one of those punctured cell cappings, you remove the capping, you see the dead bee on the inside. Take a small stick or a piece of straw, stir around that dead bee and pull it out. If you pull it out and there's a ropiness or a stringiness attached to that stick, then it's likely American fowl brood. European fowl brood and other diseases on the other hand, when you stir the dead bee and pull it out, it doesn't have that ropiness associated with it. And finally, American fowl brood, of course as the name implies, like European fowl brood, also stinks. Now European fowl brood and American fowl brood have this different smells, but it's really difficult to tell you how to recognize the difference. It's one of those things that you just have to experience. The good thing about American fowl brood is that many states have state apiary inspection programs designed specifically to help beekeepers find American fowl brood. Here today to talk to us about the state program in the state of Florida is Mr. Jerry Hayes, Chief of the Apiary Section of the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. As Jamie has just uh, explained to you, uh, there are many pest predators and diseases, especially American fowl brood, which is so devastating to honeybee colonies that you should be aware of and that you should control, not only to be successful beekeepers, but also to stop the spread of these diseases throughout the state of Florida and the rest of the industry. Many, many years ago, the state of Florida, in its wisdom, decided to start an apiary inspection program, realizing how important honeybees were to Florida agriculture and for honey production. This is a key industry. This is a key niche of Florida agriculture and it wanted to protect that part of agriculture. Because as you know, without honeybees, a third of the food you and I eat every day would disappear. And specifically in Florida, just think of all the fruits, nuts, and vegetables that would disappear, blueberries, strawberries, uh, some citrus, and all the garden crops, and then think of all the fruits, nuts, and berries that honeybees pollinate by accident that feed Florida wildlife that uh, bring so many people to the state of Florida. The state of Florida has implemented a registration and inspection program. We have 14 inspectors that are assigned to regions in the state of Florida that will partner with you to register you and inspect you so that you can control these devastating pest predators and diseases. Now that you're able to recognize whether or not your bees have European or American fowl brood, let's talk about how to control it. We're going to talk about controlling European fowl brood first because it's the easier of the two to control. Now European fowl brood really can be controlled a couple of ways. First, because it is a bacterium, there are antibiotics that you can put into your colonies, the RIDDA colony of European fowl brood. And there are some non-chemical ways of controlling European fowl brood. First, the chemical way. Let's say you find European fowl brood in your colonies. You can treat with the antibiotics teramycin or Tylan in your colonies. Now this rids the colony of European fowl brood and the reason it does is because the antibiotics kill the vegetative state of the bacteria, which is the only state that exists for European fowl brood. So you put the antibiotics in and the disease goes away. Now I typically don't tell people to do this so much because European fowl brood, being the type of disease it is, tends to clear up on its own. In fact, if a good honey flow is on the way, or if you feed your colony, or you add bees or brood, or you requeen your colony, colonies can push through the problem. I really want to stress that last point there, requeening your colony. Because if you have a colony that has European fowl brood, then it's obviously evident 
that your colony is, re is susceptible to the disease. Your queen is not resistant. She's producing offspring that get the problem. So I tell people requeen the colony in hopes of getting a queen whose offspring are resistant to the disease. But should you feel the need to treat with either teramycin or Tylam, you can treat it, but I want to stress that you must do it according to label. Remember, this is an antibiotic. It can show up in honey, and misuse can cause the bacterium to become resistant to the antibiotic. So you really want to follow the label. And because labels are always changing, I'm not going to give specific recommendations here, but rather refer you to the label. I do want to say though, labels typically permit you to use the antibiotics in uh, sugar syrup or powdered sugar or in patty form. Now my recommendation to you is if you elect to use the antibiotic is to put it in powdered sugar. This is the quickest way to get it into the colony. Bees feed on it quicker, they disperse it through the colony quicker and it gets out faster. As such it minimizes the chance that the bacteria in there are going to become resistant to the antibiotic. Leaving uh, the antibiotics in the sugar syrup or in the patty form keeps it in the colony longer, increasing the chances the bacteria can become quite resistant to that antibiotic. Now moving on to American fowl brood, you have the same modes of treatment available to you as you do for European fowl brood. If you find the disease, you could use the antibiotics, but there is a clear problem with this. Why? The antibiotics kill simply the vegetative state of the bacteria. What's left behind? That's right, the spore. As such, you can have a sick colony, you can put in antibiotics, but the American fowl brood vegetative state is going to die, but the spore is left behind. As such, you'll get rid of the symptoms, you think your colony's better, only two months later to find out that your colony has American fowl brood again. The kicker is, it never left in the first place. It was always there, you just killed the vegetative state, but the spore was lurking behind waiting for your colonies to be stressed. Because of that, the only true way to deal with American fowl brood with antibiotics is to treat prophylactically. This is something you don't have to do with European fowl brood. European fowl brood, you see it, you can treat. With American fowl brood, if you see it and treat, you're accomplishing nothing. So a lot of people take the prophylactic choice. In other words, you treat before you have the problem. If you're going to stay on top of American fowl brood this way, though, you need to treat in spring and in fall. The clear problem with treating with prof uh, the prophylactic route is the antibiotics in there, it's in there regularly, and that increases the chance that the bacteria are going to become resistant to American fowl brood or to these antibiotics. And I want to stress this point significantly because they've already shown that there are some strains of American fowl brood that are resistant to the antibiotics. So keep that in mind when you're using that. Really, management of either disease, but particularly American fowl brood, boils down to resistant stock. I cannot stress enough, hygienic behavior, this behavior where bees can detect varroa mites and chalk brood, etc., in cells and remove the affected brood really came as a result of scientists first discovering it with American fowl brood. So you can purchase bees that are resistant to American fowl brood. The queens will produce offspring, the offspring can detect the problems in the cells and remove it. And as such, you can keep the American fowl brood repressed or suppressed altogether and you never see it. Only when you get a susceptible strain in there is when you notice the problem. Because American fowl brood is such a significant issue, primarily because of the spore nature of the bacteria, the general recommendation is once you see it in your colonies, there's nothing you can do to rid your colony of American fowl brood. As such, you have to burn your equipment. We do not recommend taking the bees out, scorching the inside, and putting new bees in because there's no guarantee that you've gotten all the American fowl brood. Furthermore, if you use the bees in another colony, there's no guarantee that you've gotten rid of all the American fowl brood. So your state inspector, if your state has an inspector, will come to your colonies, find American fowl brood, and burn the colonies. That really is the only way to rid yourself of American fowl brood. However, I want to stress that both diseases are manageable. I tell you, before varroa mites and tracheomites came to the United States, American fowl brood was the disease that everyone was concerned about. But now it's largely been eclipsed by varroa and tracheal. 
That just goes to show you that both diseases are manageable with a little bit of understanding of their biology, a little bit of understanding on how to diagnose it, and a lot of understanding on the adequate ways to control it. I hope with the information that I've discussed with you in this episode of a video field guide to beekeeping will make you a better beekeeper, will give you the hand up on trying to control foul brew diseases in your colony. Thank you.